Um, what is something that makes me feel nostalgic? Uh, the most obvious answer, I think, is music. Um, I don't listen to music while I write, but if you need to get a flavor of, you know, 85 or 97 or 2003, then music for me is the, is the way in. Even if it's not the music from that year, just the music that I was listening to a lot at that time. That seems to me much more evocative than a newspaper headline or a radio bulletin. That can take me right back there immediately. Uh, well, some of the emotions and the feelings. The novel is set in 97 and I was quite old in 97. I certainly wasn't 16. But, um, you know, you hope that those feelings are universal and that that, 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 that mixture of of intense seriousness and a kind of joy and optimism and melodrama, you know, that that's constant no matter, uh, no matter when you were born. So there's a certain, yeah, a certain youthful quality that I remember. It was a very important time, almost more than going away to university. It was a particular moment in time, a particular summer that I wanted to kind of recreate. But I wasn't at all like Charlie. I mean, certainly I was much better at school, much more of a SWAT, much more ambitious with my ridiculous uh, O-level results. Um, Charlie is a little bit lost, a little bit unsure of the future, and I was kind of boringly uh, committed. Um, but the general feeling, the sort of intensity of it, I think is probably something I remember. I mean, Us was very much a kind of midlife crisis book. It was about, I wrote it when I was 47 and the central character was 52, 53, so I was, I was trying to conjure up this terrible vision of the future, uh, a kind of worst case scenario of being in the middle of life. Whereas with Sweet Sorrow, it's been the opposite process really. It's been trying to remember the intensity and, and kind of crazed drama of being 16, 17 and being passionate about so many things and confused and, and alternating constantly between a great hope for the future and terrible pessimism. So I've, trying, I've tried to kind of summon that up really, a feeling of, of youth um, because it was a long time ago, whereas us was a kind of vision of the future. I think some of the most powerful books I've read this year have been non-fiction. There are two books in particular, Constellations by Sinead Gleason and Notes to Self by Emily Pine, both of which are, are memoirs, essays. Uh, I found them both incredibly, I'm in awe of anyone who can write with such insight uh, and honesty about their own life and their own experience. And I found both of those books, the very different, to be very affecting and uh, beautifully, beautifully written with great insight and honesty.